Welcome back to Switch to Linux and another Distro Wars. And someone asked me to have a look at this. And I thought, hey, that's a good one. And if I did actually cover this in the past, it's been so long ago, I forget. So we're going to be looking at Manjaro KDE versus Kubuntu. Basically, in a Ubuntu versus an Arch customized distribution, both running the Plasma desktop. And I actually took some notes. Look at that. I mean, I'm, I'm, on, I'm ahead of the game. And I started today not even knowing exactly what I'm going to I actually started today not even knowing if I even was going to do a video. I'm working on this, this big project. Stay tuned. You'll hear about the big project when I'm ready to unveil it. Um, but, uh, I'm working on something really big and it's just like, ugh, it takes so much time out. So well, I kind of said Wednesday streams, they happen if they happen, but regardless, let's go ahead and get back into the topic because I got offline on my Manjaro. So, um, Manjaro versus Kubuntu. This is an excellent one. So let's go ahead and start in by having a look at the two websites. So Manjaro, this is a customized arch. So it basically is arch with some extra customizations. Arch has a lot of advantages. It is bleeding edge for somebody who needs the latest and the greatest if you run the latest hardware. If you have some reason that you have to have the absolute latest and greatest of everything, Manjaro is going to be a really good bet because it has packages nearly instantaneously. They hold things back slightly from Arch, but it's infinitely faster than Ubuntu gets them. That is a downside if things are constantly changing versions and moving and shifting things around. That can actually irritate you. That's actually why I don't use Arch on my production systems, but I do use Arch on my media systems so I can get used to these changes as they go because invariably in the media system, I'll pull something up, play around with the application, see what changes there are so that when I'm ready to actually update my main system, I actually know exactly what we need to do. That is a, a big advantage. Another big advantage of Manjaro is they have a lot of different builds, just like Ubuntu does. We're looking specifically at Kubuntu today, which is the Plasma version of Ubuntu, but there are official community builds for Ubuntu, which are going to have a variety of the most popular desktop environments. Manjaro has much the same thing. They do have their quote unquote officials, which include the XFCE, Plasma, and GNOME. And if you head on up to the, here's the official, the communities, we have a variety of different desktops and window managers. We have ARM book versions. We have development versions. So there's a lot of different things you can do with Manjaro. And overall, it does make for a, a really good experience where you can pick already what you want rather than saying, well, how do I get this desktop environment on this distribution? And both Ubuntu and Manjaro do fix that issue. It's just today we're going to be looking specifically at the Plasma desktop environment. Now, Kubuntu over here, and uh, we've just downloaded the, uh, the Groovy Gorilla version of Kubuntu. This guy here is your Ubuntu flavor with your, um, with your um, uh, Plasma build on it. And uh, they are promoting a Chris Titus Tech video right here on the front. I believe Kubuntu, or at least Plasma, is one of his favorites. Here is another one. Who's this one? This is from uh, Tux Digital. So you have uh, a couple excellent videos there, excellent channels that you can go through and watch those videos and see what uh, what they actually have. And with this, of course, we're getting an Ubuntu base, so it's also going to work with a lot of hardware. You might even say that with Ubuntu's tweaks to the hardware, that is going to work with as much newer hardware as an Arch system might. So that's kind of up to you to decide for yourself. Ultimately, neither one of these are going to be bad choices. Both of them give you some really good options. So let's go ahead and start in, and uh, we will go ahead and, and start in having a look at our, um, we'll have a look at our Manjaro. So here is our login screen here on Manjaro. We'll go ahead and enter my super secret password. That's definitely not one, two, three. And we will get some very nice loading screens and animations. It does look really nice. One of the things I've always liked about Manjaro is they are some of the most beautifully themed out of the box. So that with Manjaro, you're really gonna get a good user experience. This is our main welcome screen. You can turn it off by just toggling this button over here. You can see we have documentation, support, we have projects. The applications is going to boot up this very simple um, installer. Now there's a couple different installers on each of these guys here. The simple installer is going to give you a listing of the most popular software. We can see which ones are already installed. 
look at that. You can do MS Office Online. Look at that. That's exciting. Why in the world would you do that? No, okay. All right. So over here, you can see that uh, you can just kind of sort out by the most popular types of software. This does not have absolutely everything, but it is going to have most software that most people are looking for. In reality, Manjaro is really good because it has um, it has Pumuk in it, but we're going to get to that in just a second. First, let's have a brief look at the kernel. This ships with 5.10. And uh, Manjaro, though, does have a kernel manager. So the version of the kernel is going to be a lot newer on Manjaro. Ubuntu, I believe, has 5.8. But we also have a kernel manager here. So if you want to go up to 5.11, if you want to run experimental and do a 5.12 RC3, you can go back to 4.4. You can do that a lot easier from the GUI here rather than messing around inside the terminal. Obviously, any Linux distribution, you should be able to change the kernel around. It's just the question is how simple is it? So on Manjaro, it is going to be a lot easier to change the kernel should you need to. We do have uh, an automatic update um, system. It's not an automatic system, but it will alert you that there's updates. Kubuntu has much the same thing. This is actually getting us into this uh, is Pumuk. So Pumuk is, in my opinion, having played around with different Linux distributions, different software managers, Pumuk is up there near the top for me. This is something that is uh, an Arch-based system, but one of the things Manjaro did way better in this than most other ones is if you head on into your preferences, then you can have some other options. So how frequently do you want? Do you want to automatically download updates? Do you want to hide the tray when there's up, no updates available? Uh, those are all kind of basic things. Here we can just see some, some items. Here's re uh, official repositories. You can choose where your repositories are coming from. Now, where Arch stands out is the Arch user repository, which has some warnings with it, but also will provide you with pretty much every base of software under the sun, as long as you trust the community is going to do it right. You can turn this on or turn it off, and then you can go ahead and check for updates. You can keep built packages or not. You can if you like using Snap. I think that they did Snaps and Flatpaks the best. Now, I still like what Linux Mint did because I don't like Snaps anyway. But here, they kind of stay out of the debate whether they're good or bad. They say, hey, if you want to use it, turn the switch on. If you don't want to use it, turn the switch off. This is a very nice way to do it. And some people say, well, Linux Mint should do that too. No, I, because Linux Mint has a philosophical issue with snap packages. And so they wouldn't be as inclined to do that. They do give us documentation to re-enable it. But nevertheless, Manjaro has these available to set up immediately out of the box. Now they are not enabled out of the box. All these guys by default are turned off. But we do have a wide variety of software. We do have a couple different versions, including the Arch user repository, and we will have pretty much updates to anything and everything that we might possibly want to see all within it. So with that, that is, is kind of the, the thing that makes Manjaro stand out so much to me is pretty much you can get any form of software. You can grab them directly from the repositories, from the Arch user repository, snaps and flat packs integrated out of the box. So if we look at the system resources, if I can remember exactly how to find the system resources there. Uh, there we are, KSyscar, that's what it was. That was KM, there you go. So looking at the load, we're running on about half a gig of RAM on this. So it is actually running a lot smoother. Ubuntu is going to run a little bit higher. So there we've had a look at what Manjaro has to offer. So in summary, kernel 510 with an easy GUI kernel manager. Software to enable or disable snaps, flat packs, arch user repository. We do have the leading uh, bleeding edge software. Some people are going to love that. Some people are going to hate that. Memory is going to be about five, about six gig. Um, the, wow, 0.6 gig, my apologies. Theming is the last thing. Um, theming on this, you can see the theming is custom and it is beautiful. Uh, I think it is. I think the how the theming looks is fairly subjective. But overall, you can see it does look nice. They put a lot into the theming to make sure it looks good and consistent throughout. And overall, the plasma or the, the plasma theming inside Manjaro is very good. They have paid special attention to it. 
Well, you have um, the ability to switch your kernels around and you have update notifiers. So with that, let's go ahead and have a look at what the Kubuntu has, uh, has to offer and then we'll talk at the end here about which ones of these are the best. So here we are on the Kubuntu login screen. You can see it's much the same. For some reason, Kubuntu is really laggy and slow in the exact same virtual environment that uh, Manjaro was running on. So I'm not completely sure exactly what's up with that. One of the things I noticed out of the box is rather than the, the custom attention to detail theming, all of our basic startup and default stuff is much the same. In theory, this theme that we are now looking at in theory, it is actually a custom theme, but it is almost exactly like the default themes. So it is custom in that it has its own name, but I don't really think it's actually any different. So that's um, that's one of the things. You can actually notice that it is a lot laggier than, uh, than Manjaro was, and I really don't know what the reason for that is. Having a look at our kernel, we are now at 5.8 on the kernel on Kubuntu here, and I actually don't have an easy kernel manager. Sure, I could install a kernel manager to change the kernels around, but that's not something that's built in unlike uh, Manjaro where it happens to be built in. Uh, before we go too much deeper into it, let's go ahead and have a look at our system resources as well. I did notice that this one was running quite a bit higher. It's actually running lower now. So this one is actually running a little bit lower than the other one was. So at 0.43 compared to 0.51, that's actually quite a bit lower than it was when I did my, my earlier testing today where I clocked in at 0 0.77, but maybe I, it was just a matter of when, when I had a look at it because I was poking around at other software as well. So I guess out of the box, they're going to be very similar, um, maybe about the same. And the last major difference, of course, being on Ubuntu, it's going to have, um, if you're, if you're not on the LTS, it's going to have a little bit more rolling, uh, not quite rolling, but uh, every nine months you're going to have a new package base and then that's going to give you some of the latest software from the last nine months, whereas Manjaro and um, Manjaro with the Arch is going to give you new packages pretty much instantaneously. Now that does not mean that they are out of date. It just means that they're not the newest versions. They will have all of the security fixes. Things like Firefox are always going to be up to date because those always get pushed out for some reason. But everything else is going to be pretty much the same. We do have a couple of different software choices on here. Um, Discover is your primary one. There's another one. Is it, is it, is it Moan? There was another one. It's very much like um, Synaptic. Uh, I can't find it. I can't remember the name of it off the top. But it's very much like Synaptic. But Discover is your main Plasma build. So you'll notice that Discover was not in Manjaro. They've kicked out Discover and used, uh, used Palmuk instead, which was in reality a better choice. Having a look at our uh, settings over here, you can see that we can... Um, uh, it looks like Snap is enabled and we can't disable it. So if you don't want to use Snaps, you don't really have a choice. They don't really want you to not use them. Although this system, unlike your traditional Ubuntu, this system does not actually have any Snaps installed by default. If we go into our whole system itself and we start looking at, at software itself, however, uh, you do. You will notice that we do have um, we do have versions in the in the snaps and in the repositories. We don't have any flat pack support out of the box. Although it's Ubuntu, you can just install flat pack support if you want to. And I believe that there is going to be a Discover plugin to integrate flat packs into Discover as well. Out of the box, though, you have snaps. You cannot disable that. You do not have flat packs, although you can install it. So there is your biggest primary difference between Kubuntu and Manjaro is Manjaro does truly give you some software freedom, whereas 
Uh, whereas Ubuntu says, no, you're using snaps, but I don't want to use snaps. Tough, you're using snaps, but I don't want to use snaps. Use snaps, you fool. And so we kind of get into that that mix there. So those of you who are completely opposed to snaps, i.e. you will never use them, are not going to like that feature as much. I'm sure there is going to be a way to get rid of it, but they don't want you to do it out of the box. And so that in and of itself raises its own individual questions. Uh, as we as we talked about, the theming is it does have its own theming option. But if you know anything about these distros, um, there's you know there's Breeze Dark. Here's Breeze Light, and here's Kubuntu. So it's it's just Breeze Light renamed as Kubuntu. So we don't actually have any custom themes in there. It just looks like generic. Now I can say that of all of the desktop environments uh, with easily customizable themings, in other words, most of those except for GNOME, this does have the best overall default theming, but still I like that Manjaro takes that extra approach to give you a lot of other options instead. Of course, based on Ubuntu, our package manager at its core is going to be apt versus uh, uh, Pac-Man in Manjaro. But really, that's that's what we get. Those are your, our primary differences is the philosophy of updates and the philosophy of, uh, of packages. So on Kubuntu, you're going to have the Ubuntu. Now, you can choose an LTS if you want to hold versions back. You do have an LTS option. That is something Manjaro is not going to have. And that means that your package versions, while they will get security updates, you will not change to new versions, except for things like, like web browsers, which tend to roll automatically anyway. Um, so that's something you don't have. Now you can pick the semi-rolling instead, in which case every nine months you're going to get new versions. But if you do need the latest and greatest, Manjaro is the better bet. If you want to hold packages back for the life of the computer, you want to go with Kubuntu on an LTS. So that is the option that you have here. And there are very good reasons to choose each one of those. Um, update notifications. If there's updates, is it going to tell you about it? Yes, it will. And it will give you a notification down here prompting you to install updates. As we said earlier, though, there is no way to manage the kernel um, out of the box that easily. And of course, you can do anything in the terminal in Linux. But if we're talking about something that is that is easy, that is um, that's kind of where we are. So there we are having a look at Manjaro and Plasma. Which one of these is the better distribution? Well, it really does depend on your use case. If aesthetics is your thing, I think that Manjaro is definitely a cut above the edge. And that's really no different. I mean, they are have the best theming of all of their desktop environments across the board. Manjaro does an excellent job. If you have the latest hardware, Manjaro is probably going to support a little bit better. And if you want the latest rolling software, Manjaro also is going to help you out with that. Now, if on the flip side, if you don't really care about new software versions, you want a system that's consistent, you can push your security updates and things won't change around on you a lot. Kubuntu is going to be the better way to go, especially with the semi-rolling and with the LTS versions. You have a couple of different ways to get your get your software updates. One of those is holding back. One of them is every nine months rolling your system. Both of these have the same basic functionality. They have the same basic uh, usage. And again, with the snaps, flat packs, and things, Manjaro has a lot more flexibility in which options you're going to use. Kubuntu forces you into snaps. You cannot uninstall that as easily in the settings, so you can't toggle it on and off. But nevertheless, you don't have to use them specifically. It does not have any installed out of the box. So those are really our, uh, our takeaway points. Let me know your thoughts on these two distributions in the comments down below. Uh, which one is your favorite? Which Is there any of these you will not consider and whatever reasons? Let us know those in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. 
please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.